Hey everybody, One Peg here. Uh, finally back in the office from uh, from a week in Cape Cod with my family. It was an awesome time. Uh, I didn't realize, I think, how much I needed to uh, to get away a little bit and spend some time just kind of relaxing, even if it was only for a few days out of the week, because I worked, you know, as you guys know, the majority of the time that I was there. Um, but it, it just, it's, it's nice to be able to have that switch in mindset so that I can come back feeling a bit more refreshed, as it turns out. Uh, once I was back to uh, to being live today in in the studio. Anyway, there was a lot of requests uh, over the last couple of months from different folks asking if I would look at their gameplay and review what they've been doing. Um, so this is a little bit different from the norm of what you'll see out of this channel. Uh, I want to preface this by saying, while certain things might be funny and I might laugh at things, the vast majority of the time, what I want to be able to try and do with this, if this is something that you guys want to see more of, is just to review what people are doing in the game, give you an idea of perhaps why they moved or acted the way that they did, and try to interpret uh, if there was something that I would do differently, how I would go about doing it. Now, obviously, I realize that I am not the best Tarkov player in the world. Far from it. If you're looking for that kind of stuff, you, you want to watch guys like Quattro Ace and Clean and and Landmark and Pestily and and all of those other folks that are extremely, extremely good. However, in, in almost every circumstance, if you watch me while I'm live, uh, I tend to be able to tell almost instantly what it was that happened and how I died, the gun that was used, etc., etc., etc. This isn't really designed to be, like, meme -y. It's more along the lines of, like, if someone was looking to be, I guess, coached in a certain situation, how I would approach something differently if there is something to approach. There is a channel in the Discord called Review My Gameplay. If you guys want to check that out, it's in the general section, kind of toward the bottom of that section in Discord. Uh, feel free to join it. There's a link, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're welcome to make a submission to that channel if it's something that you want me to take a look at, and, uh, and I'll go through it. Okay, so I haven't actually seen any of these in advance. Um, but what I'm going to do is go through these, give you guys an idea of what it is that I see, what it is that I'm hearing, what it is that I'm seeing, and uh, let you know like the name of the person that submitted it and that kind of stuff. Okay, because of the length of this, what I'm going to do is kind of like move between like the good parts, give you guys an idea of what is kind of going on leading up to that, and offer you a synopsis of, of like the climactic moments, okay? Okay, so this is off of the spawn on customs. Uh, diffusing looks like uh, he, he he spawned in front of the train tracks, uh, moved ahead over toward where the junk bridge is on customs, and notices a three-man. Uh, looks like they're running either pistols or hatchets, but because it's as grainy as it is, I can't really tell. But then he engages uh, he engages the squad. And it looks like the third guy, at least, has a rifle just based on how his arms are. Okay, so he drops him with a single shot. Gives a little chuckle. Okay, so here's, here's something interesting that you'll typically see uh, in Tarkov for whatever reason. Uh, so if you're, if you're playing in a squad, okay, and you are running across the land bridge like this, right? Obviously, the third player in line, if you're in this squad, he gets hit. What you don't want to do in this case is provide a clear line of sight in the direction of where the shot originally came from. So in this case, these two other folks on this three-man team, decide that they're going to run up through the underbrush where they couldn't really be seen and end up in a horribly disadvantageous uh, position where, obviously, Strange now has a clean line of sight uh, to shoot. Unfortunately, looks like he missed on those two, but I have a feeling he'll end up circling back on them. Now, there's a scav right there. Uh, in the weeds where Diffusing is shooting um, that took that first pot shot at him. And he drops him. Now, Diffusing's actually playing this the right way. Uh, 
instead of trying to chase down the the duo across the river and try and like you know just just cat and mouse them to no end, where he could potentially end up having somebody get the drop on him, Diffusing actually does something smart. He disengages and he takes a different route to try and maybe do a bit of more of a flanking maneuver. That way, if the two PMCs are kind of looking behind them at where they came from, just in case they end up having Diffusing run up behind them, he can now potentially be able to overcome them by hitting them at a different angle. And there's another scab that he dropped right there in the weeds. And this is, this is exactly what he's doing. So by the looks of things, he's, he's doing exactly what I had just mentioned. He's coming up. Now he's trying to look for a line of sight onto the two remaining targets, thinking that perhaps they might still be on the road and using, you know, maybe the dead body for bait. Okay, so as of this point, he hasn't gotten eyes on them yet. And one thing that I did notice that I think would might have been a little bit of a mistake, but he's reacting to a grenade explosion that went off over toward the dorms, is he never ended up looking toward the crates uh, at the top of the hill and clearing them. So if we go back just a little bit, you'll see he crests this hill, and then he never ends up really looking left. He just kind of keeps going through the field. So in this case, it's very possible that the two other guys that had ran up the road could just be camping out inside of that open blue crate that would be over on his left in, in this shot here. And they would have a pretty easy time shooting him in the back. So he does, he does quick scan left, but he didn't really have an angle to make sure that no one was there. Okay, so now we're at three-story dorms. He had crossed the field. He hears uh, a burst of AK fire and a scav yell and is looking to engage in the dorm. So it sounds like there's at least one PMC inside of the dorm that is engaging a scav. And there was a grenade that went off. So if you listen, you can hear, you can hear that little tinkling noise. Right, so that's that's the sound of the the halogen lights, the neon lights inside of 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 the dorm, which you can see one dangling right here from the ceiling. That's the sound of having had a nade go off inside, and then the the neon bulbs aren't working as well as they once did. Okay, and diffusing ends up taking a guess, looks into the bathroom, sees that there's a PMC kind of waiting, and lights him up. And now he knows from this standpoint that he also took a shot or two in the right arm. So now, if you notice, his right arm is black and it's broken. And in this case, actually, it wasn't down the hall. In this case, there was actually somebody behind him with a pistol that shot him in the arm. So they were trying to do a pinch move. And there we have the third one. It looks like now Diffusing is third party to this. Had the click of death. And here's a nade toss. He pushes past the nade, which is actually a really smart move. And then point shoots that guy to death. Uh, unfortunately losing his other arm and his stomach in the process, and now he has a bleed. So right here would be a perfect opportunity to heal yourself, which it looks like he did. He ended up uh, at least healing his stomach, and now he's working on a surgical kit for his arms. Loot VSS, check some jackets. And now we have PMC number five for this raid is at the end of the hallway and just did a quick peek around this bookshelf. And unfortunately, his reaction time was a little bit slow, so he missed that uh, that easy snag, but that's okay. And there's an F1 nade thrown down the hallway, which you saw damn near clipped right through his face. He tossed a VOG, but missed the wall and the ricochet. He was trying to bounce it down the hallway, but threw it in the kitchen on accident. But it did force this guy to disengage. Now, in this case, if I were defusing... I would be pushing down the left side of the hallway to try and cut the viewable angle on 
the other PMC as much as I possibly could because obviously the closer you are to something, the more accurate it becomes. So in, in this case, I probably wouldn't be holding this angle because it's very, very exposed. Uh, he has almost his entire body worth of hitboxes uh, open and available, whereas the guy that he's looking to engage at least has his legs pretty much cut off uh, and can pull a lot more like in-cover quick moves here. So he throws an F1 down the hall. The guy that he threw the F1 at, you just heard. I don't, I don't know if you could hear that or not. Uh, he was prone. It sounded like he stood up, so maybe he was prone trying to uh, trying to do something cheeky. And since he had... Let's see if that's what, it, what I thought it was. Yeah. Okay. So what he did right here is right here he has this task from Jaeger that says kill seven PMCs in the dorms on customs. And that nade kill would have been number six. So you'll hear him gasp. And since he knows that he got the nade kill, now he rushes down the hallway. And there he is, dead. And then he gets a loot and scoot. Okay, so for this clip, we have Wazy, who looks like he's doing some snipes with an SVD um, on reserve. Okay, so here's a two man. Looks like they're just off spawn uh, over in the corner. They're kind of like taking their time, checking their corners. And it uh, looks like Wazy's about to get the drop on him. So I think I think that final shot before he started rushing down the stairs. That shot right there I think got him. I think that shot killed him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that one killed him. So he dropped the first guy, he missed like the first handful. And again, this is another mistake that you'll see players make is they end up kind of making this bum rush through an area that has absolutely no cover whatsoever to try and close the gap, thinking that they can, you know, maybe get a shot off on the guy sniping at them. And once this guy figured out where the sniper fire was coming from, he started running toward the tower. And I think that is a mistake. I would never have, have thought uh, that was a good idea. In this case, I think I would have tried to gain some cover on the backside of that hill and then maybe worked my way between cover positions to try to at least gain some distance between myself and where Wazy was set up. So he throws out a grenade. He throws out, a, it looks like there's a rough cut here. So he throws out a grenade, and then he ends up uh, back up on top of the tower, kind of overlooking that fence line again. And here's another duo coming through the fence, probably listening to the commotion. He miss Unfortunately, he misled that one. This guy ends up continuing on the same path that he was on, dives by the tank. Both of them are trying to... So, and here's, and here's another mistake right here. So both of them are trying to figure out where the shot came from, and they think that the shot came from behind them instead of coming from their left side. Uh, and they, they misjudged where those rounds were being shot at them from. The other thing that they're doing is they're not keeping a mind's... Uh, they're, not, they're not keeping a mindful presence in terms of, like, where they are and, and what lines of sight exist. And in this case, you know, an important lesson here is going to be when you sit on that part of the hill, you're not going to be safe from the tower. As we see one go down, and the other go down, and that's all she wrote. This one is from one of the uh, Sherpas uh, named Mako, and it looks like he's in the dorm with a 74U. 
Okay, so we got Evil Watchman on that one. Hey, uh, hey, Mako. Nice ping, Chief. Nice. So he's in the process of uh, of kind of like gloating to himself a little bit over uh, over this kill that he got in the kitchen. And he bends over to check this guy and realizes that there's another guy coming up the stairs. So he makes a duck out in the hallway. The first guy ends up pulling a peeker. Now this this actually was like super, super, super advance, uh, in advance of, of actually seeing him. If you notice, Mako aims right here and he ends up actually pre-firing this guy a little bit. Right there. Because he was listening to him coming up the stairs and figured that if he timed it right, he'd catch him. And he did. If you notice, there's like a little bit of pink mist right here. So he actually hit him once and you can hear the PMC yell. And he's trying, he tried to wall bang him right here, like through the bookshelf. That didn't work. And then this guy comes back through uh, to try and like regain a covered position or a more covered position on the stairs. Gives him another out. And that didn't, that didn't end him. So now Mako's pre-firing, like test firing, trying to keep the guy nervous and honest so that he doesn't rush him uh, off the edge here. And then you're going to see the PMC that he's engaging come out and pre-fire this angle as he, like, appears. Right there. So you see that he's already holding the trigger down. Figures as he comes out, he's going he's gonna to start just spraying down the hallway at that angle. And Mako uh, reacts by ducking inside the doorway, so that was a smart move. And now, now he makes, now this other PMC makes, makes the mistake. He, he blows his ammo. Mako points or peeks back out into the hallway to see if he can catch the guy if he comes back at him. And this guy made one of the largest mistakes that you can make is you're in a relatively open area, and you decide to reload. And during that reload animation and, and reload sound, it gives Mako an opportunity to rush this guy unopposed and drop him. Right there in the midst of the reload, okay? Now, at the same time that he's firing at this guy, you hear a shuffle to your back right, which means there's another guy in the stairs, duo partner, whatever, and Mako has to turn around and, and take care of him too. Very, very smart play. Very good. Very good, very good. All right, and this one's a submission from one of my mods. Uh, Tank to Frank 89. And this is, this is tanky. Look how pretty he is. Please tell me we traded. Okay. So, right there, you can see there's a guy. I mean, it's hard to tell there's a guy, but this little, this shadow right here is like shoulder. And he, uh, he took a second to get lined up. His head is right here, looking out the window. Wow. It's it's hard to say like what you would do differently in this situation. I think the general rule of thumb is if you're already moving pretty slow and you try to take like a quick look on a corner like that and you're this exposed like he's he's head and shoulders standing straight up looking in the window. If you saw a silhouette like that, you want to like duck back away like as quick as possible because it's very very likely that they've been listening to you, they can hear you walking, and they're waiting for you to kind of like appear in the window so that they can pop you. Rather than trying to stand here and get a train on shot, he kind of he kind of just like stood there and waited for it to happen. You know, I think that's what I've got for this one. Um, if you guys dig this and you want more of this, uh, you know, let me know and make uh, some more submissions in the review my gameplay channel on the Discord.
Okay. Um, but until then, I will see you guys next time. Uh, peace. Thanks. Thank you.